What if every trade node was a nation in 1444? Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be seeing what happens if every trade node is a nation in 1444. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. So as you can see I've made every trade node into a nation at the start of the game and I did let a month tick by so the nations can get sort of adjusted and to see if any nations release subjects because their over governing capacity and I did try and fix those issues. So I made these nations by giving the province which the trade node is named after to that nation. So Sevilla is in Castile so I gave Sevilla to Castile. Valencia is in Aragon but I did give it to the nation of Valencia just because it had the same name. Bordeaux is owned by Brittany. Champagne is owned by France. The English Channel is owned by England. The North Sea is owned by Norway. Sweden has the Baltic Sea. Lubeck has Lubeck. Saxony has Saxony. Austria has Vienna. Frankfurt has Rhineland. Genoa and Venice you know. Morocco has Safi. Tunis has Tunis. The Mamluks have Alexandria. We have Yemen, Ethiopia, Kargawe, Mutapa Kilwa. I added a little custom nation down here in the Cape of Good Hope just for fun. No crazy ideas. I didn't even mess with that. I just created it. We have Congo of course. Benin owns the Ivory Coast. Mali has Timbuktu, Yao has Katsina. Back over in Europe we have Hungary, Poland, Ruthenia just for fun, Crimea, Novgorod owns Novgorod and I thought it would be funny to make Muscovy own the White Sea. We have Kazan and the Great Horde in these two trade nodes. Back over here we have Ajam, Hormuz, Afghanistan, they seem to have released a vassal already, not a big deal. Gujarat, Delhi, Bengal, Bahmanis, Vijayanagar owning the Indian trade nodes respectively. We have Pegu in Burma, Ayutthaya in Siam, Malacca in Malacca, Majapahi in the Moluccas, Cebu in the Philippines, over here in China we have Ming, Shun, Shi, Yu and Wu, Japan owns the Nippon, Zhangzhou owns Girin, we have Uzbek owning Siberia, Oirat, Transoxiana, Transoxiana seem to have released Chagatai, not a big deal. And that's pretty much what the world looks like. Now why did I give Constantinople to Byzantium? Well because Byzantium owns Constantinople. You get the idea of basically how I set up these nations and it took a really long time to set this up honestly. I also didn't touch the new world in North and South America as well as Oceania so we can see some colonizing going on. The Holy Roman Empire also doesn't exist. And yeah, I think I made a pretty interesting setup. What are your predictions? I think that Byzantium, England, and the Mamluks are going to be some of the most powerful nations. And we can take a look at the great powers now and see that Malacca is number one, followed by England, Genoa, Japan, Castile, Ayutthaya, Majapahit, and Zhangzhou. So definitely these are the nations to watch out for. And we're going to come back in some time to see what all the nations have been up to and everything that has changed. So as you can see it's been about 30 or 40 years and let's take a look at all the changes that have happened so first of all Brittany as you can see they are significantly smaller they lost a war to France they lost to Valencia they lost to Castile and they lost to England so they are pretty small right now England took this France took some land over here and Valencia took a bit of land over here France have expanded quite a bit and I think they have grown the most in Europe but Ragusa did form Croatia and they beat up Hungary pretty bad after that Hungary had to release Transylvania and Wallachia due to rebels then Poland beat up Hungary and then Transylvania beat up Hungary and as you can see Hungary doesn't even exist so due to that Transylvania, Wallachia and Poland and Croatia grew quite a bit. Saxony is having some rebel problems. I guess the Danish rebels were too much for Lubeck and now Denmark is back. Crimea is in a war with Genoa. I guess Genoa still does have some cores here. Byzantium hasn't been doing anything actually and QQ almost got wiped out by Syria, the Mamluks and Persia. As you can see they are smaller than they used to be but they seem to be fighting back in the second war against Syria. Not a lot of changes in Africa. The African nations just got into some wars. We can see that Mali is in a war with Benin, Morocco, Mutapa and Kargawe. So this is actually the first big African war. It was pretty stable up until now. Delhi blew up. As you can see there's a quite a few nations over here since a lot of rebels seem to have enforced demands. Not a lot of changes in Southeast Asia either but Majapahit seems to have beaten Malacca in a war taking these provinces from them and Cebu have taken some provinces from them as well and Ayutthaya took some land from Malacca too so I guess these three nations beat Malacca up. Ming blew up and they don't even exist I guess some things never changed but this actually happened after Manchu declared war on Ming. They took some land over here after that these nations popped out then Shun took some land then these guys took some land and Wu has lost some provinces to Yue as well as we can see right here. Japan 
kind of chilling. They've taken economic ideas, they might be going for a tall isolationist playthrough, and Ajam did form Persia. So now it's the year 1501, as you can see, and it's time to check out the latest changes. France did expand quite a bit more into Brittany, and Brittany are down to these three provinces right now. And Frankfurt did lose some provinces to France as well, over here, over here, and over here. Saxony are still having rebel problems, they just can't seem to recover from that. No changes in Genoa and Venice, although Genoa did manage to take Azov right here from Crimea. And speaking of Crimea, they lost to Byzantium, with Byzantium taking provinces over here and over here. No changes up here, Denmark has taken some provinces from Sweden and from Lubeck. Now Novgorod seems to be having some rebel trouble too. And Transoxiana is about to lose big time to Afghanistan. Yu seems to be losing to Shun and Wu, and Shu has also popped out. Ethiopia is taking an L to the Mamluks and Yemen, Hormuz has expanded a little bit, and Malacca took another L from Ayutthaya, Cebu, and Majapahit. As you can see, they've lost some land here, here, and they lost the entire Malay Peninsula with Ayutthaya even starting to expand into Sumatra. And England has started to colonize, as we can see, they have a province right here in St. Martin. And colonialism has spawned in this province in Orkney in Norway. So it's been about 40 years and France seems to have expanded the most, fully annexing Brittany while also taking out big chunks out of Valencia right here as we can see. Not too much changes over here except that Saxony collapsed while Byzantium has been expanding in this direction, fully annexing Wallachia and taking some provinces from Transylvania as well. And Genoa did expand in this region. Kazan is almost done and Persia did take quite a big chunk out of Hormuz. And the main player during these 40 years was Manchu and they've basically doubled in size, taking down Uzbek multiple times while also expanding in this area too, knocking out some of the smaller nations that popped out of Ming. They do have Beijing, but they're not emperor yet, so let's see if they'll form Qing. And Yemen has grown a bit at the expense of Ethiopia, which like I said collapsed. Funnily enough, it's still the age of discovery because the Protestant Reformation hasn't spawned yet. And the number one great power right now is France, followed by England, Castile, Byzantium, Genoa, Ayutthaya, Manchu, and Austria. Manchu would be number one, but they don't have renaissance or colonialism, so they are number seven. So it's been about 50 years since we last checked in, and quite a few things have changed. As we can see here, Byzantium have expanded quite a lot, taking almost all of Greece from Croatia, so these provinces right here and these right here, as well as some islands. They took even more provinces from Crimea in this area, and they took one province from Syria, Novgorod, formed Russia and now Russia and Muscovy exist. That's something you don't see every day. Austria has expanded a bit into Westphalia and Westphalia was of course formed by Frankfurt and France have expanded substantially as well, full annexing Brittany and England have expanded into Germany, into Denmark and into Scotland and Ireland as well. And Morocco lost to Tunis as well. And they seem to be losing to Benin right now after they lost to Mali. Benin has been expanding into Congo a bit but no other changes in Africa. Persia has expanded in this region as well as over here a little bit and Majapahit have gotten their colonists from their ideas so they have started to colonize getting some provinces in Australia. Japan has finally stopped being a hermit and they've taken quite a few provinces from Wu over here and Manchu are still huge they keep pushing into Uzbek, into Transoxiana and into China as well and Norway is colonizing Mexico as well as Vinland. The Protestant Reformation did finally spawn about 15 to 20 years years ago in Saxony and it's finally the age of reformation. No nation is actually Protestant yet though. Manchu has the largest army followed by Japan and Bengal so it's been about 30 years since we last checked in and it is the age of absolutism. The Protestant reformation has ended. There are a couple of Protestant countries. England went Anglican and you might be wondering what's up with this over here? Well let's take a look at the cursed dynastic map mode. So going over into the dynastic map mode we can see that the land Lancaster dynasty is present in Great Britain, in Saxony, in Muscovy, and in Sweden. Now the most important thing to note here is that Sweden's ruler died and they got into a PU under Great Britain. Great Britain and Sweden did fight a succession war against Russia, of course they won. So Great Britain has a PU over Sweden, they pummeled Norway a couple of times, that's how England formed Great Britain, and they might get PUs over Saxony and Muscovy too, it remains to be seen. The Von Habsburg dynasty is also 
on the throne of Ruthenia, nothing too out of the ordinary here, and the Palaiolgos dynasty, which is of course the ruling dynasty of Byzantium, is present in Poland as well. But that's not all. The Palaiolgos dynasty is also the ruling dynasty of the Mamluks. Now, I don't know how this happened. And it's also the ruling dynasty of Morocco. Now, of course, Morocco did get it from the Mamluks, but I have no idea how the Mamluks got it in the first place. Another cursed situation is that the De Valois dynasty from France is also on the throne of Tunis. And after all those cursed things, it's finally for one blessed thing. The Safavid dynasty is the ruling dynasty of Persia. Castile has been expanding into Morocco and Tunis, and Tunis has taken some land from Valencia. Great Britain did lose the Netherlands, but like I said, they got a bunch of land from Norway, they got Sweden in a PU, and they got a bunch of land from Denmark. In Russia's defeat to Great Britain, they made them give back some cores to Muscovy, leading to this border war right here. Nothing out of the ordinary, to be honest. But the coolest thing that did happen is that Manchu formed Qing. Now, I honestly didn't expect for this to happen. I never thought Manchu would actually go for the Mandate of Heaven. I thought they would just conquer land, but they did. They defeated Shun, and they took the Mandate of Heaven and formed Qing, and have been expanding ever since. Persia has grown a bit, and so has Bengal, and the Mamluks have expanded into Ethiopia and Yemen a bit. Mali has almost completely pushed out Benin. Of course, we can't forget about blessed Norwegian Mexico and Norwegian Louisiana. Global trade did spawn, and it was in Genoa. And we're back in 1661 to see what has been going on. Now, the first thing to note is that Byzantium has grown quite a bit, basically almost wiping out Croatia, and Bosnia is Byzantium's vassal. They're close to integrating them. Venice has also taken land from Croatia. France has grown quite significantly, taking back their course from Great Britain. That's something I didn't expect, so France declared a reconquest against Great Britain, and they won, taking these three provinces right here and two or three provinces down here. And Castile is just standing around doing nothing. But they have expanded into Tunis and Morocco a bit. Great Britain did achieve victories elsewhere, taking over these parts from Norway, and as a result of that, Canada became independent. So this was Vinland, if you remember. Canada also has land down here, which is pretty funny. I guess they didn't like the cold up there. In India, Bengal seems to be emerging as the strongest power. They are allied to Gujarat, so that might limit their expansion a little bit. No changes here, except for Majapahit, Australia. Qing has been growing, taking over some provinces in China. No new personal unions yet, but the dynastic map mode is as cursed as ever. The Netherlands have also grown quite a bit, thanks to their alliance with France. So I wasn't gonna check back in for another 20 years, but something has happened and I just had to record it. So as you can see, France is in a war with Great Britain and their subject Sweden, and with Canada on France's side as well. Now what is this war? Well, it's the French Succession War. I really have no idea how it happened, but France does have 100% liberty to desire. Of course, this is understandable because Canada is pretty weak. But the best thing to happen out of this is that Great Britain decided to actually intervene. If Great Britain can defeat Canada, they will get France in a PU under them. And I do think that Great Britain will be strong enough to keep the PU over France. Now, if Great Britain doesn't win this war and France remains in a PU under Canada, I think that France, of course, will declare an independence war. Great Britain is losing right now since they do need to occupy Paris so they can get the war score ticking and France has just massive stacks over here. Honestly, I don't think that Great Britain can win this war, but we'll have to wait and see. Either way, it's a pretty funny thing that happened. So it's been about 20 years since we last checked in for that crazy France succession war with Canada and that just ended and Canada simply released France. So France are independent. Britain managed to reconquer the Netherlands as well as parts of Denmark and Lubeck. Persia has expanded slightly into India but not too much. And now as you can see Byzantium are in some sort of war against Poland. Well, here is the most cursed thing that happened during this campaign. Byzantium is a junior partner of the Mamluks. Now, I honestly didn't think it was possible for Muslim nations to get PUs, but I guess this happened because the Palaiolos dynasty were on the Mamluk throne as well, and this happened. So Byzantium is loyal to the Mamluks. Of course, this is expected since they were friendly literally the entire game. Byzantium, the Mamluks, and Persia have been allied since the beginning, but Poland did intervene in this war, of course, because Poland has the Palaiolos dynasty as well. And over here, Qing has been expanding a lot. They even have expanded in this direction too. They now border Muscovy. Of course, as you know, they do get cores on all of China once they conquer certain cities. The Enlightenment has spawned in France, so soon we will be getting the Age of Revolutions. 
So it's 1742 and the revolution is in full swing with a center of revolution spawning in the province of Afi in the Mamluks. And it has spread all over the Mamluks in Hormuz, in Tunis, Morocco and Mali as well. No nation is revolutionary just yet though. The Mamluks did win the succession war against Poland and Byzantium is under a PU under the Mamluks. It's still pretty funny. Their liberty desire is 100% now. They were loyal up until recently but I guess something must have changed to get their liberty desire up. France has blobbed hard into Iberia as well, fighting a big war against Castile, pushing into Austria, Westphalia and Saxony as well. Great Britain has fully annexed Sweden and they've taken over some parts here and they've basically reformed the North Sea Empire. They have constructed the Kiel Canal as well. I haven't actually seen the AI do this very often and it is at tier 3. The Mamluks have also constructed the Suez Canal and it's at tier 3 as well. We'll have to wait a little bit more for the Panama Canal though. Mutapa is dominating southern Africa. Bengal seems to be well on their way to taking over most of India. Qing is still extremely powerful. They even have Muscovy as a tributary now and they're fighting a war against Ayutthaya to make them a tributary as well. This is what the religion map mode looks like in Europe. Pretty expected. Great Britain is an economic hegemon. No naval or military hegemon yet. So let's check back in soon and see if Byzantium gets free from the Mamluks. Looks. So it's been about four decades and unfortunately no country went revolutionary as we can see the revolution fizzled out but lots of cursed things did happen. Okay so you thought that the Mamluks PU over Byzantium was cursed? Well remember that Poland had the Palaiologos dynasty as well? Yeah you can probably guess where this is going. Poland is in a PU under the Mamluks as well. Now I don't know how this can happen exactly. I've seen a couple of reddit posts happening like the Ottomans getting a PU over AQ or something like that that but if anyone knows how it's possible for muslim countries to get pus and over christian countries too so byzantium is orthodox and poland is catholic if anyone knows how this is possible obviously it's partially possible because they have the same dynasty but if anyone knows if this is a bug or how to trigger it let me know in the comments so yeah mamluks has a pu over byzantium and poland tunis has been expanding a bit into italy france has been pummeling castile even more which resulted in brazil becoming independent this was of course castile colony and they've been pummeling the French and the English colonies as well. Mexico is also independent as well. Ah yes, the famous Vijayanagar colony of California. Yeah, Vijayanagar did start colonizing if you remember. Persia has grown by quite a lot actually. They've taken this territory over here in the Pontic steppe. They've taken some more territory up here and in India and now they just declared on Delhi in the Persian Delian imperialist war and they have a bunch of nations on their side. Of course, Persia is gonna win this. Now if you're wondering where Delhi came from, Bengal formed Delhi. I don't know what's the reason behind that. I guess they just had the decision and took it. So yeah, Bengal became Delhi. And they have expanded into Southeast Asia quite a bit, as well as South India and Tibet. Qing did finally halt their expansion after taking some territory here and they lost a couple of wars to Transoxiana and Muscovy actually. So we have only a few more decades to go before the end of the game and let's see where every country will end up. So we finally reached the end of the game. It's 1821 and what would happen if every trade node was a nation. In Europe, obviously Great Britain is dominating in the north. I did expect this since they did start out with the English Channel, a very powerful trade note, but I honestly didn't expect for them to dominate the English Channel, the North Sea, Lubeck, and the Baltic Sea. It did help that they got a PU over Sweden, but they did start conquering Norway and Denmark even before that. So that definitely gave them a big boost. France became huge. I didn't expect for them to expand this much, to be honest, taking half of Iberia, half of Germany, and all almost all of France. Pretty disappointed in Castile they did have the entire Sevilla trade node and I thought they would do better and form Spain even. Also disappointed in Genoa and Venice they had great trade nodes. They're just weak now. Shout out to Byzantium for consolidating the Balkans and Anatolia before falling into the most cursed PU under the Mamluks. The same thing happened with Poland. They are also in a PU under the Mamluks just like Byzantium. Nothing too much to say about the German nations. Not a lot of fun stuff happened here and no German nation became very powerful they all got gobbled up by the neighbors with saxony still being alive barely and austria the whole thing here is just too cursed to even look at we have russian nogai muscovite ural russia muscovy russia muscovy muscovy over here ruthenia mamelukan 
Ruthenia, 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 Genoese Lower Dawn. This whole thing is just a pain to look at, to be honest. Huge shout out to Persia. They started off as a jam in the Persia trade node and they have grown so much. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought a jam would crumble, to be honest, to some of the more powerful nations in the region like QQ or Transoxiana in Samarkand. Transoxiana is still alive. They are a tributary to Qing, the biggest nation by land area, owning all of China, Mongolia, Siberia, and these trade nodes over here they even started expanding into japan as we can see and if this game would run for a little longer they would probably take over all of japan southeast asia started off pretty interesting with ayutthaya cebu and majapahit jumping on malacca but things seem to have stabilized here with majapahit going with a more hands-off colonial approach as we can see we have majapahit australia in india bengal became the dominant power and later they formed delhi and now india is split between persia and delhi with some two smaller nations over here this one and Afghanistan. The Mamluks had a pretty decent game, not too much expansion territorially. They did start off with the Alexandria trade node and expanded into Aleppo, Basra, Aden, and Ethiopia, but their biggest W was the crazy PUs over Byzantium and Poland. Over here in the Maghreb, Tunis and Morocco still exist. Morocco has been beaten down by Mali, Tunis, and Castile, and Mali is the biggest power in West Africa. They started off with the Timbuktu trade node. Benin is pretty small, as well as Congo and Kargawi, and so is Kilwa. Mutapa seems to be the dominant power in southern africa these nations didn't do too much honestly very few wars and they were very slow to expand so not a lot of fun stuff going on in the southern portion of africa in the new world brazil broke free from castile in central america mexico is independent and we have castilian california of vijayanagar french cascadia and canada if you recall they broke free from norway huge shout out to the native nations of akoma and stadacona for being pretty powerful at this point in the game and there are still some uncolonized provinces in north america the most cursed things that happened are definitely the Byzantium and Poland PUs of the Mamluks and this border gore right here in the Russia and Ruthenia regions. And another massive surprise was Janju, who formed Manchu and then they formed Qing. Qing has the highest income in the game, followed by Great Britain, France, Persia, the Mamluks, Delhi, Byzantium, Brazil, and Poland. They also have the largest army with 810,000 and the largest force limit at 1500, followed by Great Britain, Persia, France, the Mamluks, Delhi, Poland, Brazil, Russia and Byzantium. This is what the religion map mode looks like. We have Catholic, Protestant, Anglican, Orthodox over here. Persia is Shia. Sunni seems to have decreased in size due to Persia of course. Vajrayana due to Janju, later Manchu and Qing, Confucian, Theravada. Australia is Hindu thanks to Majapahit. Fetishist in Southern Africa, Ethiopia is Coptic. Most of South America is Catholic and most of North America is Totemist and Catholic. The most valuable trade node since this is a video about trade nodes is the English channel right now. All by Lubeck, Persia, Alexandria, Beijing, Champagne, Sevilla, Malacca, Constantinople, the Caribbean, Rhineland, and so on. Genoa and Venice are nowhere to be seen, to be honest. Pretty surprising. And finally, we have the Great Powers list. Qing is number one on the Great Powers list with 4,000 development, and they are a military hegemon. Great Britain was also an economic hegemon, but they stopped being one. At number two, we have France, Great Britain, the Mamluks, Persia, Delhi, Mali, and Venice. This has been the most cursed what if video video so far. So let me know in the comments what's the next what if video that you would like to see. Leave your suggestions. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed so it would really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships so if you want to support the channel with more than subscribing you can check out the join button down below and join the discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.